Hey guys, I'm Rob Tatro. Today we're talking about how to invest $10 million. The million dollar question. I'm Rob Tatro from robtatro.com, head of the Tatro Wealth Advisor Group here at Canaccord Genuity Wealth Management. If you want to talk about this specific question or anything else in your portfolio, please go to www.speaktorob.com. I'd love to book a no obligation consultation with you to chat about this or anything else. All right, so you've got the $10 million. Either you've, you've sold the business, congratulations, good for you. Maybe you've got an inheritance, maybe you won the lottery, or maybe you've just built up your wealth, you're a good saver and you got the $10 million. Congrats, now you got this wealth and you're not sure exactly how to invest it. So the thing that has changed kind of dramatically over the last 10 or 20 years is the asset allocation of the ultra high net worth. So $10 million, I would kind of consider that ultra high net worth. Um, it's a, it's a large account. Most of that is probably non-registered or either in your corporation or non-registered assets. Maybe you got a million dollar RSP and you know a hundred thousand dollar TFSA perhaps, but largely most of this money is going to be non-registered, which means tax. We have to factor in the tax consequences of these investments. Because remember, the income that's going to be generated by this $10 million, the vast majority of it will be paid out to you either personally or through your corporation, and that would mean tax. So remember, there's three different ways that people are being taxed, either interest income, that simply gets added onto your income, and that basically means if you've got a $10 million account, you're probably top tax bracket, so you're losing about half of that income, roughly, depending on which province you're in, but call it roughly half of that income to tax. You can get a dividend income. So if you own Canadian eligible dividend paying companies, the tax rate gets reduced, it gets grossed up, and then you get a tax credit for your dividends. But the absolute best one would be to get either return of capital, or capital gains, a deferred capital gains. Those are the best. The cap gains are taxed at about half and the return of capital is not taxed at all in the year you get it. It's fantastic. So how do you get those? Well, you have to focus on alternative asset classes. The asset allocation for the ultra high net worth has changed dramatically. It used to be kind of a balanced portfolio where you'd see someone owning 60% of their portfolio in stocks, large cap Canadian US equities, and another 40% or so in traditional fixed income, bonds, you know, debt, debentures, maybe preferred shares if you're, if you're considering that as fixed income. That was the portfolio. 10 years ago, that's what people owned. That's what ultra high net worth individuals owned. The family wealth offices, these high net worth offices, what everyone's doing is they're moving away from just owning nothing but stocks in your portfolio and nothing but bonds. And they've now started managing money much more like pension funds do much more like institutions do. Because if you have $10 million, you're no longer just getting that to feed your retirement or to fund your retirement and your golf game. You're actually doing it likely as a multi-generational legacy leaving tool. So when you get to that money, it actually becomes managing money like a pension. This $10 million, you're likely not gonna spend it all in your lifetime. So then we, we want to consider, consider multiple generations and legacy building. If this is something you want to chat about, this legacy building concept or anything around kind of longer term, uh, you know, time horizon for your investments, go to www.speaktorob.com. We'd be happy to book a call with you. So these asset allocation targets have changed. These high net worth firms are no longer putting people in 60, 40 portfolios. And it makes sense because tax is key, but not only tax is key, you don't want to see a 40% correction in your $10 million portfolio if you own stocks, right? You don't want to see your 10 million bucks go down to 6 million bucks. That's not what people want to see. They want to see consistent growth uncorrelated to the markets or, or reduced correlation to the markets, tax efficient income, and just stable consistent growth because they want the money to likely be there. You likely want your $10 million to be there for your kids and to be there for your kids' kids. A lot of different options you could consider including trusts, family foundations, uh, you can consider giving the money to your own family foundation, which you then get a tax credit in the year you do it, and then you can kind of distribute the income over the future years of that family foundation. So the legacy building component on the 10 million bucks is likely important to you. All right, so now you own perhaps 30% alternatives or 40% alternatives or maybe even 50% alternatives in your $10 million. So now you got half of your portfolio diversified real estate across North America or across the world. Maybe you got some in Seattle, some in Dallas, some in Toronto, some in the prairies. Your, your portfolio of diversified real estate is truly a diversified portfolio. Maybe you have some multifamily, some commercial, some retail, some industrial, and you actually own these buildings. 
You actually own these buildings either directly or through a private REIT or through a limited partnership. And that exists on your statement. You get to see that and that's how multi-generational wealth is typically built. And that's what we're seeing a lot more. So if you got that 10 million bucks, I'm strongly advising you to consider a shift in asset allocation. So if you're at one of the large investment firms and all they're telling you is let's build a balanced portfolio for your 10 million bucks, I would strongly urge you to consider and question why that's happening. Question why you shouldn't own ultra tax efficient investments that have a reduced correlation to the market and are able to generate income even in down years. That's what you should likely own. So a portfolio, the asset allocation needs to be shift. The, the mentality has to change in these ultra high net worth individuals. And it's time for you to sit down with a guy like me and for you to understand and appreciate why this makes sense. Thanks for tuning in guys. I'm Rob Tatro from robtatro.com, head of the Tatro Wealth Advisory Group here at Canaccord Genuity Wealth Management. If you wanna talk about your 10 million bucks, guys, I do this all the time. We're experts in this field. Go to www.speaktorob.com. We'd be happy to book a no obligation consultation. All right, thanks for tuning in. Have a great night.